Hey, we hit the booth of Gansen. They are known for AI-based eye tracking. And who are you? Please introduce yourself. Hi, uh, I'm Xiao Yijian. I'm the CEO of Gansen Technology. So we are eye tracking solution provider. Mm, awesome. So eye tracking, this was in the past, it was uh, about VR usually, yeah. but now it's also about augmented reality and smart glasses, right? So, what is the newest project that you're showing here? Yeah, so uh, Gensing is an eye tracking solution provider. So, this year we provide a new solution, which is called Aura 2S. Mm -hmm. Aura 2S is the uh, most uh, tiny eye tracking module on the market. Mm. Yeah, so everything's here. So, including two eye sensors. Yeah. And to I I yeah. and we and we also provide a one tiny NPU neural processing unit. Yeah, so everything is handled by the NPU. So the output of NPU is a gaze coordinate. So that means that it's a standalone module and the, the, the host processor can be anyone. Mm. Yeah. So and and your company, what exactly do you do? do so do you make the algorithms and you work on the reference designs? Yeah, so the, the core is algorithm, and we also design the whole solution. The whole including solution. Including the hardware, yeah. and uh, the reference design, and also the, the next production procedure, we will help our customers to do it. Mm. Yeah, so everything together, we are a solution provider. Yeah, so, but uh, I read, I think I remember a press release. Um, was there something with Hymax, maybe? Yeah, so uh, this NPU is from a Hymax. Yeah. Yeah, we are a close partner. Oh, so yeah. This is a, a Hymax neural processing unit. And why is it so small? Yeah, it's a tiny AI processor. Yeah. We call it a tiny ML, tiny machine learning. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, the inside there's a, a, a small AI processor. Mm. And we need to compress our model into a, a smaller one and to can be executed by this one. Yeah. yeah. So, how much energy does it take? I if think it's, the, yeah. as, uh, the energy is very low, so yeah. it's only 10 milliwatt. For example, uh, for, when everything is working, uh, I, think, I think the power is around uh, 70 or 80 milliwatt. Yeah. And we believe that in average usage case, it uh, should be lower than 30 milliwatt. We also working on the to lower the power consumption further. Mm. Yeah. Further. Yeah. So in the near future, I think we will provide an even lower power solution in the near future. Yeah. At that time, we will also announce to the, to the internet. Also, we'll let you know if you have those new solutions. Awesome, uh, yeah. And we hope that with our effort, iShaheen can be a, a wide adopted yeah. uh, interface. Yeah. I think that it's a, a new era for eye tracking. Every device can integrate eye tracking now. Yeah. Because of this solution, it's very easy to integrate. Yeah, awesome. So, what is like, can you make the camera still smaller? I think the, the camera is already very tiny. It's very tiny. Yeah. yeah. But we still hope that there will be an even smaller one in the near future. Yeah. We, we cooperate with our partners, there will be a smaller one. Yeah. But it's not the main focus now, right? The main yeah. focus is still the power consumption. That's right. Yeah. When do you expect that we get smart glasses, AI glasses, with this solution? Uh, we believe it's, uh, it should be next year, 2026. Yeah. And a few of our customers will do mass production and go to the market next year. Yeah. yeah so in next year, you will see a few of our uh, product in the market. Yeah. What about VR? Because that's been out for a long time already, right? And. Um, Eye tracking has not been universally um, uh, adopted there, but do you see some improvement there as well? Yeah, we believe that we will become a building standard component in yeah. the VR device. Uh, for example, we have a, a partner called DPVR in mm. China, mm. and they already adapt our our part into yeah. their new VR headsets. That's cool. Yeah, we already heard about DPVR from Sunniverse because they are partners as well. And what is the application for um, AI tracking in smart glasses? Why do, you, why do they need to know where our eyes are? Okay, uh, let me show you uh, a few demonstrations. Hmm. Yeah, so first one, uh, you can see, it's very easy to use. So you can see, uh, when I just wear the glass, yeah. Yeah, even without any calibration, you can see here, this is my world-facing camera. 
and uh, the blue circle is my gaze point. So you can know oh, where hello. I'm looking at. <laughs> I'm looking at you. Yeah, I'm looking at the other people yeah. here. I'm looking at the logo. Yeah. And then you can trigger your AI, your Gen AI, to answer yeah. your question. For example, uh, how much is it? And who is he? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, so you don't have to direct the camera, for, right? You could like have in the middle of the display, you could have uh, like a viewfinder, so to speak, where the camera is, right? But so you don't have to do that. You can use your eyes to navigate. Yes. Yeah. yeah awesome. So there are two kind of usage. You can interact with the physical world, yeah. just, just like what we do. And you can also interact with the digital world if you have a display. Yeah. Can you show us maybe a demo of how it works? Do you have like a video? Looking at it, the icon will be highlighted. Gazing a short time at it, the app will be activated. With Aurora 2, you can gaze to browse the pictures on your AR glasses. This shows the interaction yeah. with the display. Awesome. And was this uh, with the Georgian glasses? Yeah, it was yeah. Georgian glasses. So, you are based in Taiwan, right? Yeah. I can show you other demo. Uh, actually, I can do a live demo, but maybe mm. this one is uh, even better. Yeah. Yeah. So, for example, we, we put several items on the on the desk, mm. and when you look at one item, it will show it's a Starbucks. Hmm. Look at other item, it will show it's a it's a wine. Yeah. When I look at the other one, it's a, a Giardelli chocolate in San Francisco. I'm sure show you the Giardelli. Yeah. And you, when you go to, for example, when you go to Taiwan or when you go to China, when you see a menu, and you cannot recognize the menu, your AI engine can help you. When you look at this ramen, yeah. and it can show you it's a ramen and the price is 288. Yeah. Yeah. So on and so forth. So there are a lot of applications. Yeah. Is the case we call it attention based service, yeah, yeah. And how does it work? So, does every restaurant upload um, upload the images into a mini app, or, or how does it work? Uh, you don't have to because uh, uh, now you have a Gen AI, yeah, yeah. So, when you look at the, the menu, yeah, your AI will have to translate the menu to your language, yeah, yeah. I see. Uh, if, if there is so a because code, the information yeah. is yeah, is on the menu, it doesn't yes. have to um, come up with it. It just has to translate. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And additionally, it can tell you what is ramen, right? Yeah. Because some people might not know. That's Maybe right. now everyone knows, but. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that's good because then the uh, the restaurants they don't have to do anything to adopt this technology, right? Because this is always a hurdle if you have like. Um, extra steps that the customers have to take. Yeah, because yeah. it's a Gen AI era. So for Gen AI, you, you just like you have a system, assistant with a, with a multi language ability, and he can help you to translate everything. And yeah. he can inter link to the internet to help you. This is for tourism a good use case. What is a use case that people can do every day? Like, I don't know. Is it? Is it? Can you use it for payments, for instance? Uh, not now, but we believe in the near future it can be done. Yeah. Yeah. We we hope that we can also integrate the iOS recognition inside together. Yeah. So in the near future, when I, when you see something you want to buy, you can ask your glass to buy the, for example, that product for you. Yeah. And you can use the iOS recognition to do the payment. So basically, we provide a new interaction way to the AI glasses. Yeah. And we believe it's the most natural one. When you yeah. wear the glass, you don't need to use the other function to do the interaction. Yeah. The gaze is the most natural one. I think a while ago, um, someone from Intel said that the eyes will be um, the new mouse. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. Select, you select everything with that. It's also a kind of 3D mouse because we, we can also output the, the, the depth of your gaze. So you know in, if I look 20 meters further away or one meter? Yeah, we can. We can oh. So yeah, what we else can you, can you read from our eyes? So can you also read like if I look at something and I'm 
interested? Can you like read this this emotional response? Yes, uh, from some research papers, uh, you can tell many things from your eye. For hmm. example, we also output the blink for the pupil size. Yeah. yeah. So from our API, you can get every information of the users. Yeah. Yeah. But of course, you need to take care about the privacy issue. Yeah. yeah. So we hope that everything will uh, stay in the glass and those information shouldn't go out of the glass. Yeah. yeah. Because of the privacy issue. But you still want to have this information, right? So you want to give maybe the application some information. So maybe I look at a button and it should maybe select the button based on my response. It should know, oh, that's where he wants to go. And not maybe like looking at, at it for a second because right. I don't have a second. That's uh, also another reason we think it should be a standalone module. Yeah. Uh, because uh, with this kind of design, all the eye image is stay here. Yeah. yeah. So the host processor cannot get any eye image from, mm. from the system. Yeah. So it can only get the, the, the gaze vector. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we can do further. For example, we can use our API to filter out some privacy data yeah. and only output the, the one yeah. the user want to reveal to the whole system. So what the application gets as information is basically filtered through your solution, right? Yeah. Actually, I, I, I like Apple idea. Mm. In Apple Vision Pro, uh, it can only output the gaze vector when yeah. you do the click. Mm. Otherwise, they oh, don't yeah. output the case. So, yeah, yeah. So the application doesn't know all of that. Yeah. Only, yeah. That's very. That's a good point. That's a good point. And especially now that uh, these wristbands, right, they become more popular. Probably, then clicking will be very easy, right? Because you don't have to have the hand up and do like something in the camera view. It detects it even when it's when the hand is relaxed. I can show you one yeah. of the reference design. Uh, so this is the glass with the display. This mm. is the waveguide display. Yeah. And you can see we can integrate eye tracking inside the nose pad. Here. Mm. Let's see. Okay, if we can our zoom eye tracking in. here. Oh yeah. Yeah. So it's very tiny yeah. and can be integrated even inside the nose pad. Yeah. That's interesting because I've seen other um, eye tracking companies and they usually don't have a reference design with display. Yeah, so actually we have a, a VR dis uh, reference design, yeah. AR and a, a smart glass reference yeah. design. The layout, that will basically stay the same, right? So you have like here in the frame is where you put the cameras because that's where you see the eyes the best. Or yes. can you put it somewhere else in the frame? Yes, uh, our solution is very flexible. So, for example, for this one, the sensor is here. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, for our solution, the sensor is flexible. Yeah. You can put it in, in many places on the frame. Yeah. Yeah. So usually we work with our partner, our customer, to find the best place. But not in the lens. Some companies they put it in the lens, but then it's visible, right? And yeah. you don't want that. I think it's visible, and it's also, yeah. it also increased the cost. I think we want to lower the barrier of the yeah. adapting of the eye tracking. And so we want to find the most easy way to yeah. integrate. Does it work for everyone? Because some eyes, they, not every eye looks the same, right? Yeah, I think the, uh, this is why we work for this. Uh, we, we start off in 2018. Mm. Yeah, so in these seven years, I think the, the major work is to increase the population coverage. Yeah, so we test our system with many different users all around the world. Yeah. Yeah, and we believe that we can cover most of the top, uh, the people population, and so we designed uh, the the the, sit, the sensor with a, a large FOV, yeah, so that can cover the different pu people, and when you wear a glass, the the wearable variation is also taking into consideration. Yeah. Great. So uh, we're here at CIOE. Is it your first time at CIOE? Yeah. Yeah. How did the show go for you? That's very busy. So many customers come to us. Yeah. And they, most of them heard us. And some of them, this is the first time to see us. And they feel exciting that uh, eye tracking can be so small, so easy to integrate. Yeah. Yeah. And we hope that we can cover with them in the near future. 
Yeah, I hope so too. <laughs> so thanks for the interview. Okay, thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much.